Back in 2015, five years ago, a uh, German uh, journalist who also happened to have an advanced degree in, in science, I believe it was in molecular biology, decided to prove a point. Uh, what he did is he, uh, he basically put together a study along with an a, a actual professor at a university. Uh, the study basically, without going into a lot of detail, it involved, uh, uh, I think it had 18 uh, study subjects, and it involved the study subjects following a low-carbohydrate diet, where one group uh, just followed the low-carb diet, the other group followed the same diet and ate a chocolate bar. Uh, and the, the uh, results of the study showed that the people who... Uh, followed the low-carb diet but also ate the chocolate bar, lost considerably more body fat or significantly more body fat than those who just followed the low-carb diet alone. Now, this study made uh, kind of headlines all over the world. It was in, featured in various newspapers and magazines saying that chocolate can promote fat loss. But there was only one problem. The problem was that the journal that he submitted this uh, study to was what's called by some scientists a predatory journal in the sense that the journals are not peer-reviewed. Peer-reviewed involves the when you submit a study to a journal before it's published, the study is looked at or examined by a group of other researchers who will, who will confirm that the study, uh, the, uh, the topics or the, let's say the, the bulk of the study makes sense and is suitable for, uh, for um, publication. Uh, that's what peer review is. Now, peer review is not infallible. There's been plenty of peer-reviewed studies that have been proven to be crap, but it is a, uh, it's better than not having peer review. And this particular journal was uh, basically worked by you paying them money and they publish your, uh, your study. So basically anybody could have a study published in this journal. That's what this guy did. And, you know, they made, like I said, it, it, was, it went all over the world. Magazines, popular magazines, newspapers all said that chocolate helps burn body fat. He, he basically did it to prove a point about the useless, how, how useless some of these uh, journals are. And second thing is that he was kind of playing a joke on people because everyone took him seriously. Now, the odd thing is that he, the people at, uh, who ate the chocolate bar actually did lose a little bit more fat than the people who just ate the low-carb diet. But there was a lot of flaws in the study. Uh, he, had, he had a very small group of people and a large number of variables and when you have those two things involved, you can prove whatever you want by, by basically manipulating the variables. This is the problem with a lot of studies, especially, for example, studies that are uh, published to prove uh, the superiority of, a, let's say, a food supplement. A lot of these studies are, are uh, paid for by companies that sell the supplement. So they hire these, you know, gun-for-hire researchers that will put together a study to prove that their product is superior. However, anyone who knows the science and knows who can look, read between the li lines and look at the, uh, the variables of the study can figure out that the study, in many cases, is garbage, uh, but, you know, just to sell the product. But anyway, uh, the, the, it leads me to this point. Now, does chocolate have any effect on uh, helping to uh, control body weight, help you lose body fat? Is there anything to that at all? Well, you know, chocolate is fairly healthy. It's, it can't be considered a junk food. It contains a number of beneficial nutritional elements. Uh, these include polyphenols, flavanols, and catechins. So it has some, uh, these are antioxidant compounds that definitely have an effect on health. Uh, it's been linked to a number of health benefits, including increased cardiac, uh, cardiovascular health, decreased inflammation in the body, and enhanced brain function. One recent study showed that uh, giving uh, dark uh, chocolate to people over 65 enhanced memory. Uh, enhanced memory and cognitive ability or thinking ability. The flavonoids, uh, now, chocolate also might uh, aid uh, weight loss by helping to modify insulin resistance. Uh, plant may ameliorate uh, insulin resistance by improving endothelial function. Endothelial is the lining of the blood vessels. And it turns out that these, these elements in chocolate, a little known fact, is the elements, uh, these natural, uh, let's say, uh, antioxidants in chocolate, actually boost nitric oxide. They prevent the premature destruction of nitric oxide. And by doing so, they increase the health of the endothelium or lining of blood vessels, and they help to lower blood pressure and, and also help to prevent cardiovascular disease, but they also help to prevent insulin resistance. Um, another way uh, that uh, the, uh, the uh, nutritional compounds and, and uh, chocolate can help uh, prevent insulin resistance 
is by altering glucose metabolism and reducing oxidative stress. Oxidative stress has been proposed as a main culprit behind insulin resistance. Insulin, res insulin resistance results from uh, basically too much oxidative stress that, that uh, goes beyond what the body can handle normally. Uh, the well-established effects of cocoa on endothelial function also points to, a, as I said, a possible effect on insulin se sensitivity. Um, the, the, uh, this is taken from a study. The relationship between insulin resistance and endothelial function is a reciprocal one. Overall, the evidence from these studies suggests that cocoa may be, may be useful in slowing the progression to type 2 diabetes and ameliorating insulin resistance and the metabolic syndrome. And also, because of that, it also helps to uh, uh, help you, you lose body fat. Uh, you know, having more effective insulin uh, is very good for helping you to reduce body fat. A 2018 study found that consuming dark chocolate uh, lowered fasting uh, blood sugar, hemoglobin A1C, which is a long-term measure of blood glucose over several months. Low-density lipoprotein and triglyceride levels declined significantly in the dark chocolate group, and this decrease was significant between the intervention and control groups. Uh, tissue necrosis factor, out, these are uh, what I'm about to talk about. These things are uh, what they call inflammatory cytokines. They play a very prominent role, by the way, in this COVID-19 disease because they're involved in one of the worst uh, effects of COVID-19, something called cytokine storm. These, these uh, factors include tumor necrosis factor alpha, interleukin-6, and high-sensitive C-reactive protein. All of these are de decreased by, uh, by dark chocolate. Uh, uh, adiponectin levels, adiponectin is a, uh, that's a basically what they, what they call a, a uh, uh, it's a protein release from fat cells. Uh, which uh, uh, is involved in, in uh, improving uh, insulin resistance. It wasn't significantly infected by eating chocolate. In one study of 12 women, sm just smelling, just smelling and eating dark chocolate decreased appetite and reduced levels of ghrelin, the hormone that stimulates hunger. I've mentioned ghrelin in some of my past videos. Ghrelin is the most appetite stimulating hormone produced by the body. Um, it, it's released between meals. It gradually builds up and stimulates your appetite to eat again. Uh, and uh, you know, when you eat a meal, ghrelin is suppressed. It goes down, and then, as they say, it goes up between meals. Turns out that uh, chocolate will reduce ghrelin, and by reducing ghrelin, it reduces appetite, and which means you're taking less calories, which means less body fat. Another small study of 16 people compared the effects of milk chocolate and dark chocolate, and found that participants felt less hungry and more full and satisfied after eating the uh, dark chocolate. The study subjects consumed 17% 17, uh, 17 less calories in the meal uh, following eating the chocolate. Chocolate can also improve mood, and improved mood makes it easier to diet. According to one study of 13,626 people, those who consumed higher amounts of chocolate had 57% lower odds of experiencing depressive symptoms than those who do not regularly consume dark chocolate. A lot of women like to eat chocolate because they claim it makes them happier uh, and it makes them, uh, you know, it, 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 it uh, elevates their mood. Uh, and uh, there, there's an actual uh, physiological reason. For it. it contains an element called PEA, uh, which is also produced naturally in the brain. It has an uh, uplifting effect, it improves your mood, kind of makes you happy. PEA is elevated when you fall in love. A lot of those giddy feelings when you first fall in love are due to PEA uh, uh, release in the brain. And, then, and, then, and another small study published in 2014, eating uh, one and a half ounces or 40 grams of dark chocolate reduced stress levels in women over a two week period. However, even, you know, the one thing to keep in mind about all this is that uh, chocolate, uh, even dark chocolate can contain sugar and, it could, and it's pretty high in fat. So you don't want to go overboard. Uh, in other words, you want to have small amounts of dark chocolate, but don't eat it like it's calorie free or, you know, because if you start to eat too much dark chocolate, not only will it not help you reduce fat, but because of the sugar content, it'll uh, make you, uh, it can actually stimulate body fat synthesis. And forget about milk chocolate, white chocolate, all these other things. They're just sugar concoctions. They have, very, they have no health benefits at all. They're basically candy. Whereas dark chocolate does actually have health benefits. In fact, that bitter taste uh, uh, that's uh, known to occur with uh, dark chocolate is due to the cocoa content, which contains alkaloids. What you're tasting is some of the, uh, the natural nutrients that, uh, that make dark chocolate healthy. Uh, and and if, you, if you are considering using a dark chocolate product, 
make sure that it contains at least 70% cocoa. Very important, at least 70% cocoa. There's ways of, uh, of ingesting uh, the cocoa flavonoids without eating dark chocolate. Uh, they make supplements. Uh, there's one in particular, I'm not going to mention name because I don't want to turn this into a commercial. However, this particular supplement is made by uh, the, one of the largest candy manufacturers and manufacturers of chocolate in the world. But they, they made a supplement containing the polyphenol content of dark chocolate in pill form. So it has basically no calories, no sugar. But I can tell you this, I've used this particular product. It's extremely expensive. Uh, a bottle of, I think, uh, 60 of uh, capsules of it cost over $50 and it lasts about two weeks. So it's, it's kind of expensive. I don't use it anymore because to me it was just way too expensive. But it did contain all the, uh, uh, you know, standardized amounts of the cocoa polyphenols, which are very useful for health. So that's about it. You know, I, I just thought it was interesting that this one study that, you know, made headlines around the world because it was called a fake study. Uh, you know, it was made basically put together as a joke involving chocolate and weight loss. It actually did cause a little bit of weight loss, but, you know, there was too many false variables in the study. It wasn't a real study. Uh, but the truth is, as I've said in this uh, video, some real studies which w w that, that did have good controls and good uh, study design did show that uh, eating chocolate does, to a certain extent, help you lose body fat a little more. It's not going to be a miracle thing. Eating chocolate is not going to turn a big fat guy slim if he doesn't go on a diet and doesn't exercise. It's more of an adjunct. In other words, it, it helps a little bit, but you know that's all I could say. And remember, the only type of chocolate that's healthy is dark chocolate rich in cocoa, 70% cocoa content at least. So that's about it for uh, chocolate. Um, if you want to have the uh, most in-depth, current, evidence-based information on nutrition, exercise science, women's health and fitness, ergogenic aids, hormonal therapy, anti-aging research you can use today, hormonal therapy. Did I say hormonal therapy? I don't know. Anyway, uh, uh, and other uh, topics, uh, subscribe today to my Applied Metabolics newsletter, www.appliedmetabolics.com. It's 40 to 50 pages every month, no ads, pure information. A lot of uh, is, uh, it includes not only current science, but uh, but it's uh, the thing that sets it apart from other digital publications is me. I have 57 years of constant study experience, including right there in the trenches in the gym. I know what works and what doesn't work, and I, I impart all this in my Applied Metabolics newsletter. I can save you a lot of time and stress, but you can avoid some of the mistakes myself and others have made over the years regarding nutrition and exercise. And it is only available in Applied Metabolics. It's not available anywhere else, not on the web, not any other digital publications. So again, subscribe today, www.appliedmetabolics.com. When you subscribe, I'll send you an invitation to join my private Applied Metabolics Facebook uh, group, where each day I, I uh, post new information on nutrition, exercise science, medicine, and health. I also have an email portal on my Applied Metabolics uh, webpage, but it's only for uh, current subscribers. Well, welcome to uh, submit short questions related to anything they uh, read, might have read in the newsletter or any short questions that come to mind. Uh, if they want uh, any more extensive information that requires more than a short answer, I also do consults. Uh, you know, I know that I don't know, the, in this day of COVID, they don't do, uh, you know, there's not a lot of traveling around, but I, I also am open to doing seminars. If you, for example, people out there, if you're opening a gym or something like that, you want me to come over. Uh, you know, and, and give uh, really super in-depth uh, seminars about nutrition and exercise that nobody can match, I'm open to that too. And you could contact me, at, you could send me a short uh, uh, note at my uh, Applied Metabolic site if you're interested in that. Uh, and what else can I say? Uh, uh, oh, you can welcome to leave comments under this video, including suggestions for future videos. I can't guarantee that I'll answer the questions under the video. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Most of the times I don't because of time limitations. However, I always answer questions from uh, current subscribers to my Applied Metabolics newsletter. If you want to have the best friend you'll ever have, uh, I was looking for Bruno, but again, he's hiding. Bruno's camera shy. <laughs> I, he doesn't, he, I don't know, what can I say? The camera shy. Anyway, go to your local shelter, adopt a dog. They're the best, the best animals in the world. I, I like cats too, but... Dog. There's nothing like dogs. They're loyal to the end. I mean, as I said in past videos, 
you know, everybody in your life could abandon you. You know, maybe not your mother and father, but sometimes they do also. Your wife who loves you one day could hate you the next. Your girlfriend could leave you for somebody else or vice versa. Uh, but, you know, your, uh, your dog will never, ever do any of that to you. Your dog will be loyal to the end. There's no creature on earth that I know of that is loyal as a dog. So, you know, save a dog. Take care.